Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 13th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I mentioned how Microsoft as part of its Tuesday patches released an advisory suggesting to turn off the reassembly of out of order fragments. Well, I took a couple of minutes today and checked how current operating systems actually deal with out of order fragments and overlaps. Turns out that pretty much Everybody still does deal with overlapping fragments and reassembles them, but Windows 10 was sort of the outlier I found that does reject packets with overlapping fragments. So this could affect your IDS configuration in some cases. On the other hand, I also did look a little bit into more depth uh, how much fragments you'll see in general. And well, as mentioned yesterday, you're probably not going to see much outside of DNS. So take a look at this and uh, maybe you'll be okay just blocking all fragments on your firewall other than packets going to your recursive DNS server. And as far as the DNS servers go, you may be able to get rid of all fragmentations that's coming to these DNS servers if you're limiting your extended DNS option zero size to something reasonable that probably doesn't get fragmented, like around 1200 or 1300 bytes. And the MageCard skimmer JavaScript is currently going around and affecting numerous websites, including high profile websites like British Airways. These JavaScript skimmers are usually injected on payment pages. They're waiting for the user to enter a credit card account number or similar information and then report that number back to the attacker without really disrupting the actual functioning of the website. So all it essentially is, is a little bit of smarter JavaScript keystroke logger. Now, apparently there are sort of two ways how the script ends up on particular websites. In the British Airways case, the hacker actually modified a file on a British Airways server. This was the modernizer library. So a large library that's often included on modern websites. And they just added some additional lines of code to this library. However, it looks like other services that are commonly used on websites are also being used then to inject this malicious JavaScript. One of these services is apparently Feedify. Feedify provides web push notifications. So if you want to take advantage of their service, you are being asked to include a number of JavaScript files that are served by Feedify. And one of these scripts currently does deliver this keystroke logger. What makes Feedify so interesting is also that this service is particularly used by e-commerce sites. So the JavaScript will then often end up in checkout pages, which of course is just what this keystroke logger was waiting for. So how do you protect yourself from these type of attacks? Well, first of all, try to minimize the scripts and content that you are including in your page from third party servers. If you do so, there is a little trick that you can use, sub resource integrity. That's a SHA hash that you can add to the script tag to allow the browser to verify that the script did not get changed. This of course can be tricky if you have to allow the vendor to actually change the JavaScript for particular users, then this will not work. And then you're back to trusting the service to do the right thing and protect their content. Now, as far as your own site goes, well, it is probably a good idea to look for any changes to files on your web server and have some rigid change controls that will alert you if unauthorized changes are being made. Also, at the time you download and install any JavaScript or other files on your web server, make sure you're downloading the right thing by verifying digital signatures. Not really clear yet in the British Airways case what exactly happened if the attacker was able to modify these files 
on the British Airways server, or if they were able to modify these files somewhere else and then sort of trick the developer or system admin to actually installing these modified files. And talking about web application security and JavaScript security in general, one option here, of course, is content security policy or CSP to rein in from which sites you may be including scripts and the like. Well, Gareth Hayes from Portsmaker came now up with an interesting trick to bypass some features of CSP by essentially creating a polyglot file. A polyglot file is a file that could be interpreted as different things. In this particular case, he created a file that is a valid JPEG, but it's also a JavaScript file. So depending on how the file is being analyzed, it may be interpreted as either. And this is sort of where content security policy comes in. If you do allow these image files to be loaded from your site, but the image file is actually JavaScript, the browser may still execute it. An easy solution here offered by Gareth is just to host your images on a different host name and then only allow images from this particular host and not scripts. So this way the script execution should be blocked. I don't think this particular bypass really invalidates the use of a CSP. There are many good things that can be done with CSP. The main problem is usually to come up with a tight enough, meaningful policy. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.